Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to be putting in a new walkway and I'm gonna try to address questions on what kind of stone do I need to use for a base layer for walkways and patios? Can there be different kinds of stone? In what applications do you use? What kind of stone? How much do you use? So all of those things we're gonna talk about. Typically, the stone underneath a walkway or a patio is called the base. So we're gonna be addressing questions on different types of base and which ones to use where and the reasons for that. So follow along on this build and if you have questions on what kind of stone to use for a base and how much to use, this video is gonna answer those questions. And if it doesn't, reach out in the comments and we'll try to answer them there. I'd say it's holding up pretty well. Let's dig into bases, stone bases for paver patios and walkways. What I'm about to share with you on this build is experience that I've gathered from installing these things for six or seven years and working for a company that has been putting them in the ground for 20 plus years. So this is the way we do it and we lifetime warranty our hardscapes. So we use things that work. Yesterday or when I was last here, we did all the excavation to make room for stone and then typically we would start putting in our stone right away but it rained i mean the worst thing possible happened when you have all your excavation done before you bring any stone in and it rains a lot that's like not cool so that's exactly what happened we just got all our excavation done it rained for like two days i didn't even try to come in here it's still pretty wet but we're coming we came back in here today and i'll show you if you're a hardscaping company that needs to keep moving i mean you can't just sit there and wait till it dries out if i was a homeowner and i was doing this project myself i would just let the sun do its job until my subsoil is dried again but we need to keep moving so here's what you can do if um the weather plays into it so first of all when you're digging you need to know how how deep your stone base is gonna be. And that depends a lot on the soil that you have, the location that you live in, and um, what what you're putting in. If you have a hard slaty soil, you could maybe get away with four inches. If it's if it's a, it's a heavy clay that doesn't wanna get solid, you might wanna put in 10 inches. But I would say a good overall number is a six inch base, six inches of stone. If you're doing a driveway or something um, that gets heavy traffic, you're looking at eight to 10 to 12 inches. I, we do 12 inches of base on a driveway. So this is a walkway. The soil is pretty clay. And I'm gonna go with our standard six inch base. On this project, we're going to be using a 2A. That's a stone with fines in it. And I'll explain uh, tomorrow once we start putting in stone, how I decided what to use on this project, what your different options are, and what would be best depending on what you're doing. There's lots of different options and combinations that can work for a base and for a setting bed. And they all have the pros and cons, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about that tomorrow but when, when we're putting in stone. But anyways, so I have this excavated. I'm locked into the driveway here and the stoop over there, or the steps over there. And I figured six inches of base, an inch of setting bed, and two inches of pavers. So I know I need to dig down nine inches so that I have room for the stone, the setting bed, and the pavers and come up even. So that's what we did here. We dug this all out. This is pretty solid. It's, it's rain, but it's not. I scraped a little bit out this morning 
it, that's gonna pack in fine. Now there are a few paces down here where it starts to get a little squishy. And if it's really bad, I'll dig it all out until it starts to get solid. And I'll put in a clean stone, a 2B clean stone, or even a bigger stone, like a number three limestone or number four limestone riprap. But this isn't too bad, so I'm just spreading out um, some type S mortar. It's basically Portland lime and sand. And I'm gonna spread it out here and that'll help soak up some of that moisture and just stabilize the subgrade. In an ideal scenario where you dig this all out, it'll be dry. I'll take a jumping jack. I'll show you that later. It's a compaction, a piece of a compaction. And I'll compact the subgrade and then we'll put in our separation fabric and then our stone. I don't wanna run that uh, compactor on this particular subsoil because it's going to start pumping and get it'll get really squishy so what i'll do here i'll spread out my cement like he's doing like uh he's doing down there and then i'll put in my fabric and add like two inches of stone and then i'll compact that this is the extra step I probably would have been okay to put out fabric and pack in stone, but I'll just feel better if I know that I have this down there, especially since it's a clay soil. All right, I'll uh, get back to you once we are ready to do some separation fabric. Okay, folks, don't do any hardscape without uh, geotextile fabric. It's a woven geotextile fabric. See how it's braided like that? This is not landscape fabric, this is not weed fabric, it's different. This stuff is very strong and it's structural. I see a lot of hardscapes that we tear out have the regular weed fabric underneath it, which is useless. Well, it's somewhat useful because it does separate the stone from the subgrade, but that's it. Doesn't help with any load bearing at all. Commonly you see that and then about four inches of stone dust thrown on top of it. That's a recipe for failure. But um, all hardscapes, retaining walls, walkways, patios, we excavate, compact the subgrade or amend the soil with either clean stone or type S and then put in this woven wire fabric. It does two things. It uh, separates the stone from the subgrade so it doesn't work its way down in there and compromise the strength of the base and it helps disperse the load. It is load bearing, so you could have some small saddlers and this stuff's supposed to be able to span the gap in there. It's just, I don't know if it would actually or not, but it does help secure your base and make it more stable. So that's what we're doing here. And after this, we're gonna be starting to put in our base. If you're figuring six inches of base, then you need to figure out six inches of base on the side. So if I have a five foot walkway figured, I want to excavate six feet wide. If I have eight inches of base, or 12 inches of base figure for like a driveway. However deep you're going, that's how far you wanna go out the side beyond the edge. So if your edge is here, I wanna be able to have at least six inches more base outside of that, if I figure a six inch base. If I figure a 12 inch base, I wanna figure 12 inches of base outside of the edge. So over excavate, one of the main reasons for failing edges, which is a common failure in hardscapes. You see the edges start to taper off is someone got sloppy on how far their base went out. It is important to carefully mark out where you're going to be, where your walkway is going to be going because you can figure eight foot wide, but if you're off a little bit and then you come to mark out and lay your walkway and it's like, oh, I have all kinds of base over here, but I really need it over here. So spend your time marking your walkway so that you dig in the right places. Mm -hmm. 